Okay, so almost done with our series. A few things that we have to talk about. Well, we are going to... Sorry, I lost my train of thought. So, last video we talked about proportions. Remember, what proportions are is just an equality between ratios. Well, what we're going to be doing in this example is verifying. Are those um, proportions true? Because remember, if there's an equality, that implies that the left-hand side has to be equal to the right-hand side. Well, just because it's written doesn't mean it's necessarily true. So even if we're taking it back to fractions, remember when it comes to fractions, you still have to verify if they are equivalent fractions. And that's what we're going to go ahead and do. And we're going to talk about it in two different ways. The first way is going to be shown with this extreme means version. And the second way will be with just really fractions. So I don't necessarily mind which way you go about things, but again, just whatever you stick to, whatever you use, just obviously make sure you show all work depending on that method. And that is it. So let's talk about it. So when knowing three or four of the proportions, we can solve for an unknown, an unknown quantity. So if we look at, oh, that's not my laser. If we look at this proportion, so A to B is to C to D, again, just some random numbers. The outside values is what we'll call the extremes and the inside values, what we'll call the means. And these names are just simply needed for um, the first method that we're gonna go ahead and talk about. So using the extremes and means method. So to determine if a proportion is true, so that's what we're gonna be doing here. To determine if a proportion is true, we wanna multiply the extremes, so the outside numbers, and then we want to multiply the mean, so the inside numbers. And what we're verifying is, are those two different products the same? So the product from the extreme, so A times D, we want that equal to whatever is B times C. If it's the same number, then we know for sure that it's equal, and that implies that the proportion is true. If they're not the same number, that implies that the proportion is full. Okay, let's look at an example. So determine if 60 over 96 is equal to 80 over 108. Well, wait, is this the example that I wanted? Yeah, so let's go ahead and express this in terms of ratios. Is this the example that I wanted? Okay, sorry, I wasn't sure if that was the example that I wanted, but it is, okay. So determine if 60 over 96 is equal to 80 over 108. So we want to see if this proportion is true. So using the means and extremes method, let's first write this as a ratio so we can truly identify who is the extreme, who are the extremes and who are the means. And again, on an exam, I'll be conscious of the numbers. These are quite big numbers, but it'll help get the point across. So who are the extremes? The outside guys, outside of the um, equality. So what we wanna check is if the product of 60 times 108, whatever that is equal to, if that is the same to the mean, so the product of the mean, so 96 times 80. So if we go ahead and check those products, 60 times 108 gives us a product of 6,480. And remember, if this were to be true, that means that 96 times 80 would also have to give us that product. So if we verify 96 times 80, sorry, I'm looking at my notes next to me, that is equal to 7,680. So what are we thinking? The proportion's not true. Well, I didn't get the same numbers. Going by the extremes and means case, these are not the same numbers. So, so 6,480 is not equal to 7,680. So therefore, we'll say false. And again, if they were the same number, then yeah, it would be true. But again, they are not the same number. So that implies that this proportion is not true. And what that also then means to take our knowledge further is that these are not equivalent fractions.
Okay. Let's see what's next. So, as I mentioned in the first note, when knowing three or four of the proportions, we can solve for the unknown quantity. Unknown quantity. So that's what we're going to do now. So to find the unknown quantity in a proportion. So to find the missing piece. So we want to write an equation of the product of the means equal to the product of the extreme. So the product of the outside guys times the product of the inside guys and set them equal to one another. Then we can go ahead and just solve an equation as normal. So that's using um, techniques from chapter three that we went ahead and talked about of just solving for that unknown value. Then we want to go ahead and just restate the proportion with the known quantity. And then we're going to talk about the check step. So there is a way to check it. And it's kind of what we just talked about, but that's something that we're going to implement. Okay. Find the missing value. So remember, what do I do? I write an equation of the product of the means. Well, who are the means? The means are the inside guys. So the product of 4 and 20, set that equal to the product of the extremes. Well, who are the extremes? 10 and x. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make our equation. So we're going to have 4 times 20. And 10, actually, I guess I'll write it the other way. 10 times x and 4 times 20. Well, what is 10 times x? Well, that's just 10x. And what is 4 times 20? Well, 4 times 20 is 80. And now notice this is just a simple equation. So we want to solve for x. We want to know who is this unknown value that makes this proportion true. Well, notice I have 10 times x. Remember, I want to isolate for x. I want x to be left alone. So we have to think of inverse operations to undo what is um, presented here. So notice 10 and x are multiplied together. So I will need to do the inverse of dividing by 10. So when I divide by 10, notice I get 10 divided by 10, which is 1. So I'm left with just x. And then 80 divided by 10 is um, is 8. So before we restate the proportion, because that's going to be the final answer, let's show the check step. So remember, that's what we did in the last example, to check if a proportion was true. Because remember, you could still have made a mistake. So it's always possible to make a mistake. Sometimes, especially on a midterm or final, you're not thinking, and you're just flying through. So remember, how do we check it? Well, we multiply the mean, or I'm sorry, we multiply the extremes and we multiply the means. Well, who are the extremes? Well, now we know that this x is really just an 8. So we'll have 10 times 8. And remember, that should be equal to whatever is 4 times 20. Well, 10 times 8 is 80. And 4 times 20 is 80. So we know for sure that this is the correct answer. Because remember, to verify that it's true, the product of the extremes and the product of the means have to be the same. So therefore, when we rewrite it, we get 10 to 4 is equal to 20 to 8. And that is our final answer. Okay. Now we're going to be talking about See, something always goes weird with my notes. Now we're going to be talking about the same concept, but just in terms of fractions. So without the extremes and means way. And again, I don't mind which way you do it on a final, unless it's specified in the instructions. But again, um, you still want to make sure you're somewhat familiar with both. So to determine if the proportion is true, we can cross multiply. So when we cross multiply, we're just going to go diagonally between the two fractions. So the first numerator with the second denominator, and then the second denominator with the first denominator. And then we compare. So the same thing then stands. As we want to, if it's true, they have to be equal to one another. If it's not true, then the statement is false. And that's what we're verifying. So first, let's go ahead and cross multiply. But when we cross multiply, remember, we just go diagonally. So we'll have 6 times 36 and 9 times 4. Well, 6 times 36 is 216, and 9 times 24 is also 216. 
Notice we have the same number, so therefore this is true. And one thing I want to show is if you notice, because remember, if these are equal to one another, this is implying, remember what equivalent fractions are. There are fractions that have the same value, so they're equal to one another, but have different representation. Well, this is now what we know is called a proportion. It's two statements that equal to, or it's a statement of two um, ratios, and we know a ratio can also be expressed as a fraction set equal to one another. Well, if you notice, how does 6 get to 24? You multiply by 4. Well, how does 9 get to 36? You also multiply by 4. So we know for sure that these are equivalent fractions, and more importantly, now that we're talking about proportions, this proportion is true. And why is it true? Well, if we take it back, because they're equivalent fractions. And we also did show here now with cross multiplication. Okay. Oh my gosh, one second. Okay, so we can do the same thing now. We're gonna do the same thing of how to find an unknown value in a proportion. Well, in this case, using the cross product method. So what we're gonna do, remember we first have to cross multiply. So we'll have X times 27 and 18 times nine. So that's what we can see here. Well, when we multiply, we get 27 X. And again, if you're okay with the extreme, if you prefer the extremes and means method, then go ahead and just turn these fractions into ratios. And then from there, you can use the extremes and means method. So we'll have 27 times X and 18 times nine, which is 162. And again, now we can solve for X. I wanna know who is this unknown value and now, if we go ahead and divide by 27, because remember we want to isolate 4x, we get x is equal to 6 after solving. So let me just go a step further. Divide by 27. So x is equal to 6. Well, if we check, remember, what we're saying now is this X is a six. So we can see here, if we verify it and multiply both sides or multiply the diagonals, we'll get 162 on both sides. So we know it's for sure. So if we rewrite the proportion now, we'll get, so therefore six over nine, is equal to eight over 27. So that is our final answer. And stay tuned for one more video. We're just gonna do some story problems.